Friends, we're reading a very familiar passage of Jesus in what we term the Last Supper. And I'm reading from the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not now know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You will call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is who and what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who has sent them. And again later, Jesus is continuing to converse with the disciples. And he said to them, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. And if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I am blessed to have four nephews, and two of them are close to my age, and I was blessed to grow up with them. In fact, Dakota and Tanner were much more like my annoying little brothers when we were children. And we did everything together. We vacationed together, and God bless my sister Susan, their mother. She took us to see all the Disney movies, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you can think about it, we saw it. But one thing that was really special that we did together every year was that we celebrated our birthdays as kids. Now, in my youngest years, I always had a cake from a local bakery in Blacksburg called Carol Lee's. And of course, this was in the time that I didn't get to choose my cake. My family chose it for me. One year, it was shaped and decorated like a creepy clown head. And then the next year was a creepy Minnie Mouse head. But despite the creepiness, they were delicious, and if you're ever in the area, you should go and get some of their donuts because they're amazing. 
But then I moved on to ice cream cakes from Dairy Queen. One year I just asked my mom to make a simple chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. I didn't really have a traditional birthday dessert that I wanted. I've always been a little bit of a foodie and wanted to try new things. But Dakota was different. He's the oldest of the two nephews. And he always wanted my mom, his grandmother, to make him a peach pie. Y'all, that woman can make a peach pie that is just, you just can't even understand how delicious it is. You just fall in love with it with every bite. And she could probably make the crust blindfolded with one hand tied behind her back because she's made it so many times for our family. But it's just this perfect golden flaky cocoon surrounding that perfectly sweet peach filling. So mama, if you're watching, when all this coronavirus mess is over, I'm gonna probably need one of your peach pies. Before Dakota, even still in our 30s, a birthday just isn't a birthday without one of grandma's peach pies. You see, the pie is a part of the ritual of the birthday. But even more importantly, the pie is a reminder of my mom's love for him. I'm sure we can all think of days and seasons in our lives when there are just particular foods that are important to us. Think about Christmas and Thanksgiving, the traditional foods that we put on our tables. These are foods that are there, and for lack of a better word, they make our tables holy. For Brian and his family at Thanksgiving, his Mamaw Majors always makes a pumpkin roll that is always perfect. And at Christmas, she makes her peanut butter balls and her chocolate pie, and they're just so good. And they remind us, they are tangible reminders of Mamaw's love for us. Now today we remember the meal that Jesus and his closest friends, his closest disciples, celebrated together. It was a meal that reminded them of what God had done and reminded them of what God was doing. For generations, the people of Israel celebrated the Passover meal. It was unleavened bread, lamb, bitter herbs, and cups of wine. The meal was very specific as the people remembered how God had set them free from Egyptian captivity. And the food was just as important as the ritual itself because the food was a tangible reminder of God's abiding love for the people. But Jesus being Jesus and knowing was about to come for him and for his disciples, his followers, he took the meal a step further. He wanted it to be important for them in a new way. The sacred meal was no longer simply about remembering what God had done. Now Jesus wanted them to live into this meal and remember what God was doing through Jesus. So you know this story. Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks again to God, and he shared it with his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for the world. Now these were elements of the Passover meal, but they would have been elements of their everyday common meals as well. Every time that you eat and drink these gifts, every day, remember me. So in our congregation here at First United Methodist Church in Morristown, we have asked people to bake bread today as an act of remembrance. I have bread that I made today, and it's a recipe from one of the most important eras of my life, the time that I was in seminary at Candler School of Theology. This is the bread recipe that Candler uses for its communion services every week. And as I made the dough and baked it, I was reminded of so many amazing services of Holy Communion with my community there. The time that we learned together and the time that we were in ministry together. One story from my time there was of my first foot washing service during Holy Week on Monday, Thursday of 2007. I was completely terrified of the idea of washing feet because I'm a little bit of a germaphobe. But my friends assured me that, that we would line up together and wash each other's feet and it would just, it would be fine. Everything would be okay. 
except it wasn't fine. We got separated by the ushers and I ended up washing Jan Love's feet, the dean of the school. I was petrified. She put her feet in the bowl that had already had other people's feet in it and it was just my worst nightmare come true, but I got down on my knees and there in front of God and everyone. I washed her feet and I took the towel and I dried them off. And then I had to place my own feet in the bowl and a person that I had never met, didn't know, washed my feet. And I found myself caught in this strange space between holy awe and absolute human disgust. But looking back, I know that, that it was a way that forced me to experience God's love, a way that I would have never chosen. Perhaps we're all experiencing God's love in a way that we would have never chosen in this time. But Jesus' instructions to us in tonight's scripture lesson is that we should be living together in love and remembering God in love. The Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. Jesus has shown his disciples the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. This is how they will know that you are mine, that you are my disciples, when you love one another. So tonight, as we remember this ritual through bread, and we remember Jesus' love for us and God's glory, let us remember how much God loves us. While we cannot gather together to remember this tangible means of grace, I hope you will remember through your own way the gifts of Jesus this night. Maybe it's through the bread that you made today, or perhaps it's bread that you picked up from the store. Maybe you just found a candy bar laying around, or you found some cookies in the back of the pantry. But there's still ways to remember. God's love can be felt and experienced and shared through so many different elements. And tonight, as we recall Jesus washing the disciples' feet and the love that he shared in that act of hospitality, may we also be reminded that we are called to love and we are called to share with one another. So may we continue to find ways to care for one another and the world. Call the folks in your Sunday school class and check in on them. Write a card to a random member from the directory that maybe you don't even know. I think you should especially be praying for our families with children and youth. They're spending a lot more time at home. Maybe you want to give a donation to Food on Foot or another food ministry in our area. Maybe you can make masks or donate money for someone else to make masks for those who are vulnerable, who still have to go out. There are so many ways that we can be washing each other's feet, even in this strange season. And as we love one another and as we love God, we will remind the world that God is still alive and that God is still working in the world. So it's bread to remind us of God's love for us, God providing for us in Jesus Christ. And water to remind us of God's love for the world through the acts of hospitality and the acts of humility that we choose to live out each day. But friends, no matter what, in all things, let us just remember God's love tonight. Thanks be to God. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that often our spirit does not mirror yours. On the night of the Last Supper, you spoke about pouring out all that you had and all that you were, offering your body and blood. But we find ourselves wanting to hoard not only enough for this week, but for weeks to come. Help us to love as you love. Help us to pour out more of ourselves so that others might have enough. And when we promise to be faithful, let it not be just with our lips, but with our whole hearts, minds, and bodies. Instead of intending to call those who are lonely, empower to, pick up, to help us pick up the phone. Instead of intending to pick up items from the grocery store for people who are vulnerable, move us to ask for their shopping list. 
We remember tonight that you didn't just speak good news. People experience good news through everything you did. When you stopped to heal the sick, when you promised living water to a sinner who came to draw water during the heat of the day, when you drove out fear, even when you wept at the death of a friend, help us to enter lives of people the way that you did not trusting in our own abilities, but trusting that you will send the spirit you promised to help us. We know that we have been the recipients of your grace. Help us to live as people who know that they have been redeemed by grace, saved from sin, and changed because of the love given to us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Go to dark Gethsemane, ye that feel the tempter's power. Your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour. Turn not from his griefs away, learn of Jesus Christ to pray. See him at the judgment hall, beat and bound, reviled or reign. Oh, the wormwood and the gall, oh, the pangs his soul sustain, shun not suffering shame or loss, learn of Christ to bear the That miracle of time, God's own sacrifice complete, it is finished, hear him cry, learn of Jesus Christ who